Afternoon, guys. Nivens here with your weekly rock wind-up. You know, we are a day and a week out from Rockfest 2011. If you haven't heard from Bob's blog yesterday, Zach Wilde to play the Star Spangled Banner to kick off the opening of the main stage at 130. Tickets are still available. We're in the home stretch, so guys, so that means that they're going very quickly at any and all ticket match locations and of course on the website. And speaking of Rock Fest, of course, Stone Sour going to be there. 8 o'clock on the Monster Energy main stage. Corey Taylor of Stone Sour and Slipknot kind of in the news this week, but not about the whole Velvet Revolver thing and the fact he's not going to be their front man, which you guys already know, but because Joey Jordanson of Slipknot said they will continue on as a band with or without Corey. Now, if you know the backstory about Slipknot and Stone Sour, you know that Jim Root, the guitarist, and Corey came from Stone Sour basically as hired guns for Slipknot. But now with the passing of Paul Gray, and the fact that Corey doesn't really want to move forward in kind of, I guess, an honor, and maybe it is kind of a little painful for him to, to still basically perform a Slipknot, would you go see The Knot without Corey? Soundgarden rolling out a bunch of shows this summer in July, pretty much going to kick off on the 2nd up in Canada and through the 30th. Closest spot they're going to be playing to Kansas City will be in Denver on the 18th, which is my birthday, just putting that out there. And they've got a great supporting act. Uh, not all of them are going to be on the same bill, but Mastodon's on there. Mars Volta's on there, Coheed and Cambria's on there, Queens of the Stone Age is on there. So I put a blog over at 989therock.com. If you're somewhere where you can get a chance to obviously get out and see Soundgarden with any one of these bands, you're definitely probably going to be in for a good show. Well, Motley Crue drummer Tommy Lee is definitely no stranger to theatrics in his performance. He's done everything from being hoisted over a crowd to spinning around in circles to this year when he comes through a 360-degree roller coaster ride. Well, he'll do a couple loop-de-loops. Now this is of course going to be interesting to see how it all lays out when they come rolling through the Sprint Center on the 21st of June with the New York Dolls and Poison. So I'm thinking, hey, it's definitely the, uh, you know, the daughters lock up your mother's door, but I'm in. I want to see this. But 360 degrees, a roller coaster, doing little loop-de-loops, it's awesome. I'm in. Let's go. And speaking of wild drummers, Steve Adler in the news this week saying that if Guns N' Roses were to get reunited, two big things would happen. One. Everybody would love it because Appetite for Destruction is basically a soundtrack for so many people's lives. Of course, Adler being the original drummer for GNR, he also said it could make us billions of dollars. Finally, one of the guys speaking up and just speaking the truth. You know, Axel, if you got the original band back together, Adler on drums, some Slash, a little Duff, you guys could make billions. Billions. Maybe even one billion dollars. I'm Nivens. Thank you once again for tuning in to your weekly rock wind-up. If you're out and about tonight, come down to Westport. I'll be at Hellbar from 8 to 10 with Rockfest tickets. Hellbar's right there on Westport Road, right next to Kelly's. Can't miss it. We'll be out front. Lots of bikes. Plenty of room for motorcycle parking, too. I'll see you tonight. Quit walking around up there! God damn it! It stopped. That's pretty funny. All right, here we go.